deadly weapon. The Rus were eventually converted to Christianity after prolonged contact with the Greeks, and the Russians developed an alphabet based on Greek, the Cyrillic script, in order to write their own Bible. The power of the Greek church at this time would solidify a growing split between the papacy in the West and the Greek Orthodox Church. Another consequence of the contact with Russia was that many Scandinavian Vikings living in the Rus would travel to Byzantium to become part of the emperor's elite Varangian guard, a tradition which would continue for many centuries. Viking runic graffiti is still visible scratched into the stonework of the Hagia Sophia in Istanbul. In the 10th century, the Byzantine Empire was now at its height, and once again it incorporated parts of Italy, as well as much of the Balkans and Armenia. Aside from their northern foes, the Byzantines' main nemesis in this period was the powerful Muslim Abbasid Empire, the architects of the Golden Age of Islam. The contact between these two empires would create conflict, but also a fruitful interchange of ideas. A flowering of literature and science would result and both were indebted to the Byzantine Empire's large libraries of ancient Greek and Roman texts. This golden age would not last long, and by the 11th century, the empire was in trouble again. The more warlike Seljuk Turks overran the enlightened Muslim Abbasid Caliphate. The Komnenos dynasty would be inaugurated in this period, after a series of ineffectual rulers failed to protect the Byzantine heartlands from the new threat. The Turks were not interested in peaceful compromises and began harrying the Byzantines, reversing the delicate balance of power in the Near East. They conquered lands in Anatolia and got perilously close to the Byzantine capital itself. To make matters worse, Western Europe Norman adventurers were spreading across Europe on missions of personal conquest. They would expel the Byzantines from Italy and become just as much of a nuisance as the Turks. In 1054, the Eastern and Western churches had formally excommunicated each other after centuries of conflict, but the empire was in peril. Emperor Alexius I Komnenos turned to the Pope for aid. He knew that the Western Christians could no longer go on religious pilgrimages to Jerusalem while the Seljuk Turks controlled the area, so he asked for help on their behalf. These events would lead to the preaching of the Crusades by Pope Urban II, the Pope argued that the faithful would go to heaven if they took the cross and aided the Byzantine Empire's Eastern Christians. The First Crusade was ultimately a success and temporarily created the Western Christian states of Outremer in the Levant. Much of the Byzantine land was restored and the empire was hopeful once again. Wealth flowed into Constantinople from trade with the Crusader states and the now stable Komnenos dynasty would produce several great emperors, including the wonderfully wise John II, nicknamed the Byzantine Marcus Aurelius. With the end of the Komnenos dynasty came Byzantium's period of terminal decline. A coup d'etat replaced the incompetent Alexius II with the Angelid dynasty, which failed to deal effectively with a new series of military crises in the Balkans and Anatolia, as well as an invasion by William II of Sicily. Finally, during the Fourth Crusade, many Western knights arrived in Constantinople to help the son of a deposed Byzantine emperor retake the throne. They successfully seized the city, but when the now restored emperor and his son did not pay their Western backers in a timely manner, the Crusaders sacked Constantinople in 1204. The Crusaders and their Venetian supporters stole most of the city's riches and carved the empire up between themselves. Byzantium was obliterated and continued only as a series of small Greek successor states which were surrounded by Western Crusader kingdoms and Italian territories. However, against all odds, the Byzantines would have one last revival. In 1261, Emperor Michael VIII Paleologos of the Greek Kingdom of Nicaea would recapture Constantinople and reunite parts of Greece and Anatolia. Unfortunately, this brief resuscitated Byzantine Empire was very short-lived. The entirety of the 1300s saw a power struggle between the invading Serbs, the Ottoman Turks, and the Italian city-states over the Byzantines' meager dominions. Territories passed back and forth between many groups, but ultimately the Byzantine heartland got smaller and smaller. By the 15th century, the Byzantine Empire's only dominions were small parts of Greece, a scattered collection of small islands, 
and the countryside around Constantinople. Finally, in 1453, the Ottoman Sultan Mehmed II launched an attack on Constantinople with hopes of making the city his capital. Constantinople was still a tough nut to crack, but fortunately for the Sultan, a Hungarian inventor offered him the use of several enormous cannons, which were capable of breaking through Constantinople's near impenetrable walls. The Byzantines had missed an earlier opportunity to claim the invention for themselves. After turning the inventor away, they would pay for it with their lives. Constantinople was promptly captured and transformed into Muslim Istanbul. The Eastern Roman Empire had finally fallen after many centuries of unity. Although gone, the Byzantine legacy would endure. Refugees from the empire would take classical Greek and Roman texts west, and Greek artists would introduce new artistic techniques to Italy. The death of this creaking empire would ultimately help to spark the Renaissance, and Western Europe would flower.